Okay, so here I am at the playground chilling with my chilling with my not hoarding. I'm about to be hoarding. Here I am chilling at the playground with my niece and nephews and Hannah Banana. Do you want your face blurred out? No. So I see across the street this gorgeous, classy tweed like dress. Do you want to see it? Okay, so I know it may not look like a gorgeous tweed inspired classy fashion, but it will be. Do me a favor and show the camera how heavy it is. Wow. Okay, now let's head back to the currently unsupervised children. Hey, Dad, can you bring the truck over to the playground? There's something I need, and I need the truck to load it in. Okay, see you when you get here. Bye. That couch over there. Uh, might have bed bug. Uh, no. It's too risky these days. Ohio has the worst bed bug problem of, of any of the 50 states right now. Is that true? It is true. I'm, I'm going to look it up. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did remember to look that up and the results were totally unsettling. Turns out my dad never lies. Out of the top three worst bed bug cities in all of America, two of them are in Ohio. And take a look at this big juicy bed bug map of the entire United States. I mean, are you serious? And then this is unrelated, but I just thought it was kind of odd. Look at the icon for nursing homes in this. I mean, what nursing home pushes their old people around in... Never mind. Did some convincing. She helped. And he's gonna let me use... <coughs> Now it is time to harvest the materials. Make sure you are protected just in case there are any foreign bodies on the couch. Obviously this is hard for me because I don't want to cut it up because I've grown attached to the image of this couch on my porch. It's like a classier version of a porch swing, but... What? I want another cookie! Not gonna lie, this is gross. I want this to be over already. Is that a zipper? There's a zipper. This, this is a Eureka moment. I believe Eureka is a Greek word. It means gold. Double Eureka, I found a shoelace. This is the least classy I've ever felt, but it's all right. I never feel incredibly classy. Like everybody knows I'm just the poor man's Amber Shoal. That's who I am and it's fine. My lungs do not feel great. <laughs> I'm having trouble breathing and I'm pretty sure my sewing scissors are ruined. So I'd say that was a success. Oh, I was hoping you'd laugh, Mom. <laughs> now we are going to take that bag of goodies to the laundry mat and wash it because... Uh, yeah. So before I wash it, I gotta pick off all the little fluffs. So Shelby's helping me. Okay. She offered, by the way. Mm -hmm. I'm not forcing. This is not child labor, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> we just... Grab it, grab the wet. You don't need like tongs or anything. Oh, she's done this before. Thanks, Shelby. Are you subscribed to Jake Paul? Yeah. Are you subscribed to me? Pretty. Wait, did you just say pretty sure? I'm pretty sure. I can't remember. But you're sure that you're subscribed to Jake Paul? Yeah. You realize you're not Jake Paul's cousin, right? You're my cousin? <laughs> Because I'm unsure of what direction I want to go in, uh, maybe something vintage, maybe something really modern, I'm gonna ask Instagram in a very vague poll, what the heck is on that tree? That's a bag. For today's sewing project, should we do something modern or vintage? The votes are in, the people have spoken, and they want vintage! I zoomed on over to Pinterest for inspiration. I knew I wanted something sort of Jackie Kennedy-esque, but I wanted the dress underneath to be able to be worn in a sort of Meghan Markle-ish way. Now it's time to make the fashion sketch, and when I make fashion sketches, there are a lot of different mediums that I like to use, such as charcoal, colored pencils, pencils the occasional watercolor. Today, though, I would like to use the medium of gluten-free pancake batter. One of them has green food coloring in it. It's helpful to make a few different prototypes, like I did here. Now, pick your favorite. I'm definitely digging this one with darts and buttons, so I'm going to make that. Once you've chosen your favorite, you have to commit it to memory. You can do that by one, taking a picture, or two, eating it. It's no wonder that designers and scientists alike swear by eating your designs. What happens is, while you're digesting, it sends flexator neurons to your brain, firing new synapses in your prefrontal cortex. That causes futuration of the amygdala. And when the futuration neurons combine with the carbohydrates, given text withholding, it causes nearly a rupture in the creativity section of your fusiform. Here I am with 
pile of fabric that I harvested from the couch that we took to the laundromat, and now I have to iron it all because it has sat rumpled up in a bag. Update, I found out you can't iron this stuff. I started out by removing the zipper, then I mutilated the cushions into big flat pieces that will be easy to work with. I'm gonna start with the jacket. You heard the lady, we're starting with the jacket. And we're going to make that out of two separate pieces. Starting by tracing and cutting out our armpit hole on the first piece, and then tracing that onto the second piece so that they match exactly. And then we are left with two side pieces that look like this. And at this point, we're going to stop saying we and I'm going to start saying I. I fashioned this fold dark curve thing onto the front of the bodice of my jacket to make it fit the curve of the chest better. And now I'm just gonna sew those in place as soon as I get the heart to stop petting her. Apparently I worked up the nerve because here I am sewing those in place. If you want to know the measurements, you better take a screenshot quick because I'm about to get distracted by a gorgeous blizzard. I mean, look at that. Staying focused is really hard because I'm babysitting my brother's dog right now. I've never had a dog before. This is so new to me. And I never really understood the whole dog thing. Dogs have always bugged me how they can't grab anything, but like I get it now. I get why people have dogs. Since watching her, my self-esteem is through the roof. You know those videos that make you cry every time of the soldiers coming home from war and like surprising their family members? She makes me feel like that every time I come downstairs. Hi! I'm going home. Good morning! <laughs> so I'm just like too happy to get anything done, but I have to try. Go, go away. I then sewed my two sides of my jacket pieces together at the back, inside out. And then I lowered the neckline, you know, along the back of the neck. And then, to get the front of my collar just so, I pinned it in place where I wanted it to be, and then took it off and sewed it down. I wanted it to be high-necked, but I still wanted to be able to breathe. So now I'm double folding along, right on the edges. Ouch. Goodness gracious. Always! As I was trying to say, double fold and then sew down the two edges where it meets in the front of the jacket. Then, sew your two shoulder pieces together, right sides together, and start on the dreaded sleeve. I'm just kidding, you don't have to dread the sleeves. I mean, I really just freestyled mine and it turned out fine. Not sure if this is helpful or if you can even read the numbers, but um... Anyway, I pinned the sleeves on inside out, sewed them to the jacket, and that was pretty much it. Now to give this couch dress some sort of dimension, I'm going to turn the fabric the opposite direction to make the dress. See, it's just slightly darker than the jacket fabric. I made the dress in two separate pieces, the top and the bottom, and for the top, I laid down next to the fabric, marked where my belly button was, and then cut it out. Then I cut this general shape. Watch closely. And I purposefully made it a few inches too wide so that at the bottom I could add some of those foldy dart things like I did on my jacket. Then I stood in front of a mirror and traced where I wanted the armhole and necklines to be. Or armholes and neckline. One neck, two arms. I really should not be doing this standing up. I realized I needed to lower the neckline just a tad, and then I started in on those foldy, curvy dart things. Guys, what are those called? I'm sorry. Uh, Please, let's make this a two-way conversation, because I don't have all the answers. But anyway, just so you know, I did one side on myself and one on the mannequin. You don't need a mannequin, you can do this on yourself. Anyway, it'll look like this when it's done. Do I say anyway too much? Anyway, before sewing the neckline down, I cut a bunch of slits so that it would stay nicely curved as I sewed it. So something heinous happened while I was pinning. I poked my thumb and I got a blood stain. Somehow this old couch survived who knows how many years, probably 50, without having a blood stain on it. And now, now it gets one? Uh, hey, I'm back and I just remember that this is the inside side, so it's really not that big of a deal. Hope you enjoyed that irrelevant little panic attack. I constructed the skirt out of three different panels, one front panel and two back panels that would eventually join at the gigantic zipper I was going to add in the back. Then I hastily constructed two darts at the top of the front panel of my skirt. Okay, so I have this one finished front skirt panel with the darts in it, and I'm going to attach it inside out to these two back panels. But before I sewed those pieces together, I had to add darts to the back, you know, where my bottom was, but I had no idea how big my bottom was. I mean, my eyes have always been on the front of myself, so I just have no concept of it. And the backside is a really hard thing to drape on yourself, so I just winged it, or wung it, if you will, and it actually turned out fitting pretty well. For the back of my bodice, I just traced the front of my bodice. I didn't have to add those curvy dart things because my back is just slightly less curvy than my front. Then I cut that back piece in half to accommodate for the impending zipper. Quick, can you guess which cartoon character this shot reminded me of? Do 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 do. If you guess that, I'm literally, I can't even. So then I sewed the front and back bodice pieces together, and then I sewed the front and back skirt panels together. Then I hemmed the skirt, and then it was time to sew the top to the bottom. And boy, was I frightened. Let me tell you, I ain't even playing. But for once, I took my time. I was cautious. I tried it on several times with pins in it before I actually sewed it, and it turned out slightly perfect. I'd show you me sewing it, but my tripod fell over, so. 
Sewing the zipper was a little tricky because as you can see, it's all ripply and janky from, you know, we're guessing 50 years of use. And the fabric around it was so thick that it broke my needle, but you know what? It was okay because I was able to find a replacement needle. Then I continued to happily sew to my heart's content with the end of my project in sight when that darned hoodlum of a zipper broke my replacement needle. That's right, two needles broken within like 12 minutes. But God is good and I was able to find another replacement needle. <laughs> If your mind is racing in anticipation of finding out what I'm going to do with these metal studs, well, they are for purposes of bedazzlement. So these are all just slightly a different color and they look kind of old and nasty, so I want to glaze over them with some of this. But firstly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep them all. I'm going to just take that. That. After prepping them, I gave a paper bag more piercings than a 2007 scene kid and then spray painted all the tacks. Once they were all evenly gold and shiny, I embellished my jacket with them. Now if you're not up to date with your tetanus shots, or if you just have some weird aversion to pain, you can make it so you don't poke yourself with these by putting hot glue over the pointy part of the nails on the opposite side. I also hot glued several broken stud heads to the straps of my dress. Then I made my Jackie O styled pillbox hat using a strip of interfacing and a cardboard cereal box. I pin my strip into a circle, then trace the circle, then cut it out. Then I traced that circle onto my fabric and I glued the whole darned thing together. If the cereal box you used has a recipe on it that you would like to try later, make sure you face the recipe towards the inside of the hat that won't be covered with fabric. I glued this clear plastic comb into the middle of my hat, but you don't have to do that if you're better at balancing things on your head than I am. Then I embellished it with another little piece of fabric and those two buttons, and then... <laughs> All snap, all snap, some madman realness right here. <laughs> Okay, look how literally perfect this couch fits right between these two columns. Once my dad sees this, he won't make me take it to the dump. Uh, oh, no.